Schultz with Lush Plan Design Build, and today I want to talk about designing and building stair stringers in a tight space. So the first thing that you're always going to do when you create stringers is you're going to measure your rise and your run. So you can see that we built the platform here. Why we built the platform here was because we wanted to end the stairs on the hallway. We didn't want this to go out into the hallway because that would have looked weird. So, so when I calculated the rise, there was no way we were going to build standard stairs. They would come all the way out to here. So then we calculated, so then I built a platform and calculated. When I first built it, I built it too high because I didn't calculate the head space here. When you're de dealing weird custom rem remodels, you're not ever always going to get something to the right size. So this was about as much headspace as I could get, and I dropped this platform back down to a level that would give me that much headspace. Another thing that you'll notice is that this platform is about 12 inches longer than it has to be for the three foot wide stair treads, and that's exactly for this, so that we could have just land the um, second pair of treads on it without anything custom. The next thing that I want to bring your attention to is the rise of these little stringers. So these little guys are fairly similar to the top stringers, but you don't have to make these stringers exactly the rise and the run the same as, as these. And the reason is because when you walk up like this, when you turn, your cadence changes. It's only when a step itself is too high or too low on the same run that it becomes a trip hazard. So you walk them up and they're the same, and you don't trip. If this was too high or too low, then you trip on it. But since you have a turn and you start a new cadence, it doesn't uh, affect that. These can be different. We wanted them to be fairly similar, but they're not exactly the same. That would have taken a lot of complicated math to get these to be exactly the same, and so we didn't bother. Okay. So the next thing I want to bring your attention to are these long stringers. So when we did this first, we didn't do it correctly, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but if you see, this is, this is actually exactly 11 inches, which is pretty much your minimum tread, and then these are 8 and 3 quarters. An 8 and 3 quarter tread is it's this pretty much maximum you're going to get, it might even be a little over maximum. But that was as small as we could get with as wide of a tread as we could in order to make these stairs work. Now if you look here, you can see these are slightly back angled. So we cut all this, we marked out all the stringers, and then we cut back an inch to give ourselves another inch of tread width so we could get closer to a standard stock or a standard um, height because it was such a compressed space. Um, the other thing that we did was, you're not going to really be able to see it from that angle, so maybe if you look up the stairs, you'll see that there's the last tread is recessed down from the second floor. Um, and that actually was the first mistake that we made uh, when we calculated the rise and run. So if you come back down, I'll show you on this piece of paper. So the mistake that we made is on the treads, on the, on the stringer itself, there's nine rises and nine runs. And so when we, when we calculated the total rise and run, we divided them by nine rises and nine runs, and that gave us an incorrect number. So instead, we had this extra rise. So then we changed it to ten rises and nine runs, and then cut the stringer out of that, and then it worked fine. Um, so what I recommend is that you number your rises and you number your runs. And then that way you'll know the exact number of rises and the exact number of runs that you're going to use no matter what. Another thing to bring your attention to, and this is what I find uh, most people mess up on, is the measurement of the rise is finished floor and finished floor. So in, in every case it's a little bit different. So for example down here, this is our finished floor. So, and this up here is not our finished floor, so then we had to subtract out how much rise we were going to have from this finished floor. In this case, it turned out to be an inch and a half. In this case here, it turns out to be three quarters. So when you cut your stringer, most of you, 
if you watch the other video, you should know, you make your stringers and then you cut the bottom out so that this first step is the same height as all the other steps when you put the final tread on. So there's going to be a three quarter wood tread on top of this. So we cut that out so when we add this in, it'll be exactly the same. And then it transfers up each step at the same height. The other weird thing for us, for this one, is that this is a wood finished floor, and at the top it's a carpet finished floor. So that's going to give us a different finished height, which we had to approximate, because we don't have the subfloor in up there, and we don't have the rug in. So we had to add those to our measurements when we calculated our total rise. This is just maybe an interesting detail for this particular design. We decided to, we're going to keep this open, it'll be boxed in, and this will be a little built in down here. And so we like the look of where it would cast all the way up, so we shaved this hanger piece at the same angle of the stringers. And then we took these metal brackets because it was two, two joists thick, and then sort of custom wrapped them so that it holds up this second joist that we hung down to hang the stringers on. And I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Have a great day.